Welcome to part 4 of Let's Play City of Thieves by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 307. Let's reread this paragraph as a recap. Walking towards you along the street are two huge guards wearing the black uniform of Lord Azur. As they get closer, you see that they are trolls, brutal mercenaries employed by Lord Azur as Imperial Elite Guards. To your right there is a tree which reaches almost to the top of the city wall. If you wish to risk walking past the trolls, turn to 290. If you wish to climb the tree in order to get over the wall, turn to 11. And there are the trolls. OK, we're going to risk walking past the trolls and turn to 290. Um, you try to walk nonchalantly past the trolls, but they suspect something odd about you and call you over to them. Uh, they ask you where you live and you reply that you are in Port Black Sand on a trading mission. Uh, the trolls laugh scornfully and ask to see your pass. If you have a merchant's pass, turn to 219. If you do not, turn to 335. Okay, now unfortunately we uh, lost our merchant's pass, so we don't have one. Uh, so turn to 335. Uh, the larger of the two trolls tells you that you are under arrest f um, for being in Port Black Sand without authorization. He tells you that he is feeling generous, however, and offers you a choice. Uh, you can pay a fine of all the gold in your backpack and be thrown out of the city, or spend a year with rats and cockroaches in a dirty dungeon cell. Uh, the other troll bursts out laughing, saying, Generous? Ho, ho, ho. Ah, sour belly, you have such a sense of humour. If you wish to pay the fine and be thrown out of the city, turn to 367. If you wish to resist arrest, turn to 73. Okay, we're going to pay the fine which is all the gold in our backpack. So we're now down to no gold, which is just five gold pieces. And, and then we have to be thrown out of the city. Uh, so turn to 367. Uh, the trolls watch carefully as you open your backpack. You give them all your gold except for one gold piece, which you manage to palm without their noticing. Oh, so we have one left. There we go, so we gave four gold pieces away. Uh, they then place themselves on either side of you and march you along Mill Street until you reach the city's north gate at the junction with Goose Street. Uh, they tell the two guards on duty not to let you back into port not to let you back into Port Black Sand. Uh, they give you a forceful boot up the back side and you land sprawling on the dusty road outside. Um, do you have all the items required to slay the Night Prince, and have you been tattooed? If you have, turn to 201. If you are missing any of the items, or have not been tattooed, turn to 299. Okay, we now have everything, because we have the, uh, well, we have the tattoo, and we also have the black pearl, the hag's hair, and the lotus flower. Uh, so let's turn to 201. Um, following Nicodemus's map, you start your long walk north to the guarded tower of Zanbar Bone, uh, the Night Prince. Uh, before I continue with this paragraph, I will just say, yes, in the last video I was reminded, um, someone left a comment saying uh, uh, that I actually did have the Ring of Fire. Uh, bizarrely, I didn't notice it in, in my equipment, but there it is, Ring of Fire. So I stupidly didn't use it on the... Uh, uh, on those bush beasts, or whatever they were called, what were they called, uh, leaf beasts rather, uh, so that was stupid of me, and I also have been forgetting to add one attack strength because of the helmet, so I always forget these things, um, I always go by the rule that as long as I don't make it easier for myself, if I, if I make it more difficult for myself, it doesn't matter, um, which of course um, did make it more difficult for myself, um, for me rather, because uh, the Ring of Fire would have um, made it so I wouldn't have to fight the uh, the leaf beasts and the 
the helmet obviously uh, not using it made it harder for myself so yeah I'll try to use the helmet from now on but um, it's, it's so easy to forget to use these things um, yeah so I apologize for that um, but uh, from now on I'll, I'll try to use them um, okay where uh, where was I um, okay uh, you walk through woods and fields. You are able to relax a little in the pleasant countryside and breathe uh, and breathe the fresh air with its wonderful scents. As the light fades, you decide to camp under a huge elm tree. Uh, you cook a meal of stewed rabbit and mushrooms before settling down to a long, deep sleep. Add two stamina points. Do I need those stamina points? Yes, I do. Perfect. Good. I'm up to 23 again. Um, <clears throat> Uh, stewed rabbit and mushrooms before settling down to a long deep sleep add two stamina points. In the morning you look around for a yew tree and cut a long branch from it with which you make a bow to fire the silver arrow. As you test the bow for accuracy you are suddenly aware of a white dove sitting uh, on a low branch nearby. There is a small piece of paper attached to its foot which it lets you remove without flying off. There is a message on the paper which reads, Dear friend, I am afraid I must be getting too old to be of use to anybody. I regret that I have misinformed you about the compound needed to kill Zanbar Bone. You must use only two of the three ingredients I told you, but I cannot remember which two. I can only suggest you try hag's hair and black pearls together, or the hag's hair and lotus flower together, or the black pearls and lotus flower together. Apologies. Good luck. N. Okay, so we have uh, a bow, so I'll just say I have a bow. That's, the exa that's an example of a homograph. Um, it's a, a word, well, uh, bow and bow are, uh, are, are homographs. They are two words that are spelt the same, uh, but mean different things. There's also homophone, which are two words that are, uh, that are said the same or sound the same, but mean different things, such as there, there, and there. And there's a homonym, which is either what well different definitions either have uh, is either a hover, uh, homograph homophone or or both so that's a homonym um, anyway so uh, bow and bow are homonyms and homographs anyway um, with each other at least anyway uh, you throw the message on the ground and curse you change your mind a dozen times before making a decision finally you make your choice and grind the two ingredients together on a flat stone you place the compound in a leather pouch, hoping you have made the correct decision. Uh, you set off again, but it is not long before your surroundings become less welcoming. The trees are twisted or stunted, and there are no birds to be heard. You must be approaching the domain of the Night Prince. Suddenly, to your left, you hear rustling and grunting in the bushes. It is a wandering monster, which has been attracted by your scent. Roll one die and consult the table below to see what creature has appeared. Fight this creature as usual. If you win, turn to 138. Okay, so roll one die. Oops. There we go. Roll one die, and then we get a three. Whoops. Um, yeah, you can't have a naught sided dice. Anyway, we have to fight a wolf, which is 5-5. Five, five. Not bad, actually. Not the worst one, but not the best one either. Anyway, wolf, 5-5. Five, five. Let's fight this. Let me just uh, copy and paste some more of these. Okay, so wolf. Skill 5, stamina 5. Let's do this. Okay, my skill is 11. Okay, 3, that's 8 to my 22. So I win. Put some down to three. Oh yeah, of course, and I really get twenty-three because I have the the helmet, so I have to remember to do that. Uh, not that I need it. Okay, seven. That's twelve to my seventeen, which is eighteen. So twelve to eighteen because of the helmet. Put some down to one, and then hopefully finally we get thirteen to 18 which is 19 so 13 to 19 because of the helmet gives me an extra point that means he's dead but I didn't need it ok that's the end of Mr Wolf so, so that's that 
turn to 138. If you fought the ape man, turn to 212. If you fought any, if you fought any of the other creatures, turn to 283. Okay, I think if you fight the ape man, he, you, know, you get something or, or something like that. Uh, but we didn't. We fought a wolf, so 283 we go. <coughs> Excuse me. There is nothing useful to be found on, on the dead creature, so you decide to press on northwards. Turn to 217. Uh, you walk all day until you reach the hill shown on Nicodemus's map upon which the Night Prince's tower stands. All is quiet and there is an unpleasant smell of decay in the air. Shadows start to creep along the ground as the moon rises into the night sky. And you see... Wait, let me say that again. Shadows start to creep along the ground as the moon rises into the night sky. And you see the foreboding silhouetted shape of Zanbarbone's tower pointing up into the sky like a black finger. You check all your possessions before drawing your sword and marching towards the arched wooden entrance door. Suddenly you hear a shrill howl and swing round to see two pairs of eyes staring at you. Uh, they belong to moon dogs, Zanbar Bones trained killer hounds. Fight them one at a time. First moon dog, second moon dog, okay. Okay, first moon dog nine ten, fight them one at a time. Moon dog. That's right, sun, moon dog it. Okay, nine ten. Okay, we're rolling for him first, and I have an extra uh, attack strength point. Okay, so nine plus seven, that's sixteen to nineteen and twenty. So sixteen to twenty because of my helmet. I'll stop saying it now. You, you, you know what I'm doing. So that puts him down to eight. Okay, six, uh, that's 15 to 19. 15 to 19. And again, put some down to six. I am fighting them one at a time, aren't I? Yep. Uh, 17 to 20. 17 to 20. Some down to four. Uh, eighteen to nineteen. So just beat him there with the help of the helmet. So eighteen to nineteen. Put some down to two. <coughs> Excuse me. And then last but not least, uh, fifteen to seventeen. So that's the first moon dog dealt with. Okay, on to the second moon dog. What was he? 10 to 11 or something? No, 11 to 9. So more skill, but less stamina. Okay, this one might be tricky. Okay, he gets 7, that's 18. I get a 7, that's 19 because of the helmet. So 18 to 19. So I win. Put some down to seven. Okay. Uh, Fourteen to eighteen. Put some down to five. Uh, Twenty to eighteen. So he wins. Uh, puts me down to 21. Um, 20 to uh, 24. So 20 to 24. Oops. Puts me down to 3. I shan't use any luck, I might need it. Um, 14 to 16. 
Gets him down to one. Been quite lucky with the dice today. And then hopefully last but not least, uh, probably not now, 21 to, yeah, 21 to 14. Famous last words there. So he hurts me. I'm down to 19 stamina. Glad I had the stewed rabbit now. Although that was automatic. I didn't have any choice in that. Uh, 17 to 19. So I win. Good. 17 to 19. So extra point for the helmet in case you're wondering. Okay, so they're dead. Both the moon dogs are dead. That's the end of that. Right, okay. If you win, turn to 259. I did. No picture, no. Okay, 259. Uh, you wipe the blood from your sword and walk to the wooden door. You try the handle, but it is locked. If you have a skeleton key, turn to 228. Um... Yeah, you try the handle, but it is locked. If you have a skeleton key, turn to 228. Otherwise, you may either pull on a cord hanging down in front of the door, turn to 4, or attempt to charge the door open with your shoulder, turn to 365. Okay, first of all, I'm going to use the uh, Potion of Fortune. So I'll just put used. Uh, in brackets, in parentheses. And that puts my luck up to 12. Actually, I'll just put uh, new luck. 12, there we go. Colon. Because that's my new initial score. Okay, so luck's up to 12 now. And we do not have a skeleton key, do we? Nope. So we are going to... We're going to pull on the cord... Uh, yeah, we're going to pull on a cord hanging down in front of the door, turn to four. We have no skeleton key. You hear a bell ring on the other side of the door, and a few minutes later the door is opened by a thin, pale-skinned man with dark, hollow eyes who is wearing a servant's uniform. In a cold, hissing voice, he says, Yes. Or, Yes. If you wish to tell him you are a lost traveller, turn to 339. If you wish to attack him with your sword, turn to 35. Uh, we're going to tell him that we're a lost traveller. So turn to 339. The man looks at you and smiles, saying, We do not get many visitors in these parts, but I am sure my master would wish you to have a room for the night. Do come in. He steps back and you follow him into a beautiful marble-floored hallway. There are portraits and shields hanging on the walls, and a spiral staircase leads up to the floor above. He asks you to he asks you to follow him up the staircase and offers to carry your backpack for you, which you allow him to do. You can see that the staircase winds its way all the way up to the top of the tower, but the man steps off at the first floor and walks along the landing to a door. He opens it and walks into a large room, placing your backpack on a made-up bed. He tells you that this is your room for the night and walks out, um, telling you that you will meet his master at, at breakfast. If you wish to lock the door and go to bed, turn to 288. If you wish to explore the tower after waiting a few minutes, turn to 77. Okay, we're going to explore the tower, so turn to 77. Uh, you walk quietly back to the staircase and climb up to the second floor. Again, there is a door at the end of the landing. If you wish to, if you wish to open the door, turn to 292. If you wish to climb up to the third floor, turn to 310. Okay, we're going to climb up to the third floor, turn to 310. Uh, you climb up to the third floor. You climb up to the third floor and see another door at the end of the landing. If you wish to open the door, turn to 263. If you wish to climb to the next floor, turn to 65. Okay, we're going to climb to the next floor, turn to 65.
On, uh, on the next floor, there are two doors adjacent to one another on the landing. One is painted white and the other black. Suddenly, a voice calls out from nowhere, saying, Oh, foolish adventurer, why do you even consider it a remote possibility that you can defeat me, your mighty Zanbar bone? I am following your every mood. Every mood. I am following your every move, but you do not know where I am. Ha ha ha. Will you open the white door, turn to 319, open the black door, turn to 96, or carry on up the stairs? Okay, we, um, turn to 197. Uh, we're going to open the white door and turn to 319. Uh, you enter a room which is dark and very cold. The walls and floor are made of rough stone and the room is empty ex except for a decorated sarcophagus. There is a strong musty smell in the air. If you want to open the sarcophagus, turn to 352. If you wish to walk out again, turn to 231. And there's the sarcophagus. And presumably that's our, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's our silhouette, which is interesting. That's uh, Normally in these books the pictures don't actually uh, have pictures of... Uh, the protagonist, but we're just uh, the closest we've ever uh, the closest we've ever gotten. Okay, we're going to open the sarcophagus and turn to 352. You lift the lid of the sarcophagus and see a human body completely encased in old bandages. The light, although dim has disturbed the sleep of a mummy, and it sits up, turning its head from side to side. It senses where you are and starts to climb out of its sarcophagus. It walks towards you, with its arms extended. If you wish to fight the mummy, turn to 193. If you have a lantern, you may throw it at the mummy. Turn to 106. Okay, uh, you wish to fight the mummy. Uh, turn to 193. Do we have a lantern? Uh, no, negative. So turn to 193. If you have a ring of fire, it will be the best weapon against the mummy, turn to 286. Otherwise, you must use your sword. Mummy, skill 7, stamina 12. If you win, turn to 163. Okay, we do have a ring of fire. Uh, we have been through that. So we're going to turn to 286. Uh, you point the ring at the advancing mummy and rub the jewel. A jet of fire flies out of the ring and the mummy is consumed by flames. It drops to the floor and, and in a few moments there is nothing left but a few charred fragments. Turn to 163. Uh, the sarcophagus contains a gold ring which has an eye which has an eye etched into its top. You have found the long-lost ring of the golden eye, fabled for its ability to allow its wearer to detect illusions. Add two luck points and leave the room. Turn to 231. Okay, ring of the golden eye. But we don't need the luck, of course. So, ring of the golden eye. It's in our possessions, or equipment, whatever. And turn to 231. Outside on the landing, you may either enter the black door, turn to 96, or walk back to the stairs to climb up to the next floor, turn to 197. Okay, just before we do that, uh, we're going to heal up. So we're going to use some provisions and put our, or, uh, one lot of provisions and put our, our stamina back up to 23. It's good, so we have nine provisions left, and that's pretty much all we need to do. Okay. Okay, we're going to enter the black door, turn to ninety six. Um uh, uh, you open the door and enter a room which is adorned with macabre objects and paintings. A black cat is sitting in front of a table covered in black cloth. Two black candles are burning on either side of a black mirror on the black far wall, because everything is black, on either side of a mirror on the far wall. 
On the table lies an open chest containing a golden skull. Will you walk over to the chest, turn to 257, close the door and open the white door if you have not done so already, turn to 319, or close the door and walk back to the staircase to climb up to the next floor, turn to 197. And that's it. Um, we are going to walk over to the chest, so turn to 257. If you are wearing the ring of the golden eye, turn to 385. If not, turn to 70. Okay, we are wearing the ring of the golden eye, so turn to 385. Well, we might not be wearing it, but we definitely have it. Assume that implies we're wearing it. Uh, um, I mean, you can obtain or own a ring without wearing it. A voice in your mind tells you that the chest is an, is an illusion and does not exist. Also, you see that the black cat is not what you thought it was. Before you uh, stands a black-robed skeleton with green, translucent eyes wearing a golden crown on its skull, Zanbar Bone. Before you have time to uh, notch your arrow, the Night Prince pulls three teeth from his mouth and throws them on the floor. They explode in puffs of smoke, and out of them step three skeletons armed with swords. Fight them one at a time. First skeleton, six, seven. Skelet second skeleton, eight, six. Third skeleton, seven, seven. If you win, turn to 203. Okay. <coughs> okay, so first skeleton, six, seven. Okay, six, seven. Whoops. Okay, so he gets six, that's twelve. I get um, eighteen. So twelve to eighteen because of the helmet. I'm only going to say that once. Twelve to eighteen. Puts him down to five. Um, Fifteen to seventeen. So fifteen to seventeen. Puts him down to uh, three. Um, fair, no. Wait, what's his skill again? Oh, yes, yeah, six. Um, 14 to 17. So 14 to 17. Puts him down to one. <clears throat> and then. Uh, 9 to 17. Alright, that's the first one done. Alright, next. Second skeleton. What was this one? Uh, 8 6. Do this. Okay, eighteen to to eighteen. So no overall control. A push, as they say in pontoon or blackjack. Um, okay, let's do it again. Um, fourteen to seventeen. So fourteen to seventeen. Puts them down to four. Um, 15 to 22. Oops. Put some down to 2. Um, 18 to 21. That's him dead. Good. And then finally the third skeleton. I'll just uh, get some more, uh, copy and paste some more of these things before I move on. There we go. So third skeleton. And he was 7-7, seven, seven, wasn't he? Let's confirm that. Yep, 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay. Uh, 11 to 16. Puts them down to five. Um, Fourteen to fifteen because of the helmet. So 
So I just won that because of the helmet there. So again, he's down to three. Or again, I get him down by two, so he's down to three. Uh, oh, 19 to 18, so that's not good, is it? 19 to 18, so he hurts me. That puts me down to 21 stamina. Uh, yep, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, 15 to uh, 14, so he hurts me again. Down to 19 now. So 15 to 14, that was okay. Um, 16 to 16, so that's a push, so nothing happens. Uh, 16 to 20, so I win. Okay, maybe the last one, we'll see. Um, 13 to uh, 16. 13 to 16. That's it. He's dead, though he hurt me twice, never mind. Okay, so that's that. No buzzing, so we can just move on. Um, if you win, turn to 20. What? That's not the right one, is it? Excuse me one moment. Ah, right. Uh, what happened was I was reading If You Win on the Pirate Battle below in paragraph 386. I should have read If You Win turned to 203. Right, there we go. Uh, that didn't take me long to figure out. Um, it didn't, or rather, it didn't take me long to find the paragraph, just about five seconds, I think, so not too much harm done. I apologise for that. It's just me being stupid. Okay, uh, Zanbar Bone walks towards you, trying to touch your exposed exposed skin. You throw down your sword and notch the excuse me. You throw down your sword and notch the silver arrow to your bow. You have only one chance. You take aim and release the bowstring. Test your luck. If you're lucky, the arrow finds its mark and pierces the Night Prince through his robed chest. Turn to 244. If you're unlucky, the uh, the arrow misses. Uh, the arrow misses the Night Prince, and he advances to touch your arm. His skeletal fingers are draining your life away. You are now one of his undead servants. Okay, there he is. What a what a lovely what a lovely fellow. Anyway, let's test our luck. And because we have 12 luck, uh, we are guaranteed to win this. So we just need, uh, it's just a formality, so we need this roll to be 12 or less, uh, which is guaranteed, it's a, cer it's a certainty, so, and we actually got a 12, so good job we used that potion of fortune, blimey, anyway, so we were lucky, of course, <laughs> so um, yeah, we lose a luck point, put it down to 11, and turn to 244. That's the second time I got the 12, isn't it? The uh, 1 out of 36 probability. Uh, anyway, 244. Uh, but we were ready this time, God damn it. Um, we were ready for the uh, uh, the luck god. Um, I, I apologise uh, for that blasphemy, but uh, or the luck demon, I don't know, who cares. Anyway, uh, uh, the Night Prince is paralysed, but not for long. He can summon unearthly powers to defend himself, and he must act quickly. What compound would you rub into his eyes? Would you try Hag's Hair and Black Pearls, turn to 9? Black Pearls and Lotus Flower, turn to 129, or turn to 129. Um, or Lotus Flower and Hag's Hair, turn to 337. Uh, we're going to try Lotus Flower and Hag's Hair, so turn to 337. Uh, congratulations, you have killed Zanbar Bone, the infamous Night Prince. He decays before your eyes, becoming nothing more than a small pile of powder on the floor. Uh, turn to 400. Uh, 
you leave Zanbar Bone's black tower as quickly as you can, not wishing to spend another moment in the infernal place. Before leaving, however, you set it alight so that no evil entity may ever again use it for foul deeds. You sleep the rest of the night and long into the next morning in a hayfield before setting off for Silverton in the afternoon. Um, Battle-weary and hungry, you arrive in Silverton and uh, the same evening. You are given a hero's welcome, and gift after gift is bestowed upon you. A feast is arranged, and there is laughter, music and drinking in all the streets. Um, finally, Owen Carolyff makes a speech and presents you with a gold orb worth hundreds of gold pieces. The people of Silverton are joyous once again. Okay, so I have the gold orb, even though I'll never ever need it. There we go. Oops, there we are. I'll put Wath instead of Worth. There we are. And that's the end of that chapter. Let's quickly find out what happens if we... Uh, if we... Um, yeah, if we try one of the other things. So 9 or 129. Let's try it. Uh, you step back from the vile body of Zanbar Bone, waiting for him to decay. However, you have chosen wrongly. He pulls the arrow from his chest and rubs the compound from his eyes. He sees you and laughs. You are mesmerized by his power and are unable to move. He walks up to you and touches your face with his skeletal fingers. Your life is draining quickly away, and you will soon begin your undead existence as a servant of Zanbar Bone. Okay, let's try 129. Presumably it's the same thing. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. Yeah, so that's the end of the book. Um, not bad, not a bad book. Although the, my complaint is that the last boss relies firstly on luck. I mean, as you saw, if I fail that luck test, if I didn't have maximum luck, um, that's that's the end of the book. That's the end of the game. You, you can't you can't fail that uh, that luck test. And also, it's one out of three chance. Uh, whether you get the right compound or not, which is stupid. So if you get the wrong compound just from luck, it's two luck tests in a row. The first one is slightly better because your luck score might be good, but the third one is pure uh, luck. And if you've never done it before, I mean, the only way to do it is, if you didn't guess right the first time, is to is to get it wrong and realise, oh, it's not that right one. That's, it's not that one. I have to do the whole book again now and then try the other one because you only have... You, know, you only have 33% uh, probability each time. Absolutely stupid. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the book. Made a couple of, well, not my fault really, because I was unlucky in certain instances. Um, yeah, too much of this book is based on luck. Um, obviously, I made it harder for myself by not using the Ring of Fire on the Leaf Beasts and the helmet on the, uh, on the battles that I did in the last part. So apologies for that. But yeah, that's the end of City of Thieves. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be continuing with um, Croc Legend of the Gobbos uh, as my video series now. So next video will be part two of Croc Legend of the Gobbos, then playing that, uh, so, on, so on and so forth, until I complete that. Then I'll probably do Croc 2. Then I might do another game book. I don't know, but I'll think about it. So uh, thank you very much for watching uh, Let's Play City of Thieves by Ian Livingstone. Um, I, hope this, I hope you can watch uh, my upcoming videos on Croc Legend, uh, Legend of the Gobbos. Thanks again, and goodbye.